Welcome to a brand new series in which I will be looking into the history of select rides from conception to present day. I will also be adding opinions and looking into key aspects of the ride's history and present day standing. This video will be centered around Vampire and charting how it has changed over the years. Sit back, hold tight, you're in for a fright. <laughs> When Chessington Wild of Adventures opened as a theme park in 1987, it had a wide array of rides, from the Runaway Mine Train, to Dragon River, to the Fifth Dimension. But these rides could hardly be considered to be a headline attraction. And although Smuggler's Galleon added a level of thrill to the park in 1988, it was nothing like what was to come. Tell us about the new vampire ride at Chessington. It's brilliant! The way it swung out! I did feel scared when it flew over the trees. I felt sick when I went on it. Looks like Robin Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> the Vampire is in a new world of adventure at Chessington. It beats the living daylights out of other days out. 1990 saw the biggest change to Chessington since opening, and arguably still one of the biggest changes to this day. It saw the opening of not only The Vampire, as it was then known, but also Professor Burb's Bubble Works in a brand new area known as Transylvania. The Vampire opened as the first suspended swinging coaster in Europe and remains the only ride of its kind in operation outside of North America. The ride was manufactured by Aerodynamics, the track layout was designed by John Wardley and the theming was done by Sparks Creative Services. When it opened, Vampire was one of the most impressive pieces of theming and atmosphere ever seen at theme parks and was arguably ahead of its time. The queue originally took you through a castle door and a fog-filled underpass beneath the track and through a graveyard canopy into the station building, themed to be a gothic abbey. The centrepiece of the station was arguably Marcel, an animatronic that was at one point the most impressive animatronic ever created. There was a lighting show that gave a greater look at Marcel during set points in the soundtrack while he played along. The wider station was also brilliant. The lighting package throughout was perfect for setting up the gothic feel. There were fake cobwebs throughout and the large chandeliers helped to light the station with faux torches. The audio within the station was originally zoned so as to create a unique feel and sound from the original Phantom of the Opera inspired audio. This version of the vampire had black bat themed trains that really drove home the theme of the ride and offered a loud but fast ride. There was a minor refurbishment to the vampire for 1998 with new branding and a new logo but it was slowly becoming clear that the ride was on borrowed time and it was at the turn of the century when what is now the unthinkable really did happen. Bye bye vampire. We loved you baby. Vampire takes its final trip. Up, lift one. Where it will be rest. Where it will, sorry, where it will lay in peace. Forever and a day. As the vampire aged, it started to suffer from multiple technical issues and breakdowns. Sadly, as aerodynamics had gone bankrupt, there was nothing that could be done. The vampire closed at the end of 2000, and for a while, this was permanent. Plans were drawn up for its removal and replacement, but then a reprieve came. The new vampire. One of three new adventures at Chessington. It truly came out of nowhere, and the vampire spent the latter half of 2001 being modified and upgraded throughout. The coma had swooped in with their own style of suspended swinging trains, and they were what the ride was to receive. No changes to the track layout however, as the required planning permission was unlikely to be granted. The vampire had been saved and fans old and new breathed a huge sigh of relief. The ride reopened in 2002 as Vampire and has continued to thrill riders ever since. But this happiness was not to last. Marcel was not ready and he did not play again until 2004. The station had been stripped bare of many theming elements, including the fake cobwebs. 
The tunnel had all its theming removed, now resembling a drop to the ground more than anything else. Around the ride, the ground had been dug down to accommodate the slightly bigger trains, exposing the roof of the original queue and other parts of the area that were never intended to be seen. Finally, the original vampire entrance was used for the final time in 2002, with the fast track queue rerouted behind the entrance and out of the way, and the main queue being moved to a decidedly different entrance that we still see today. But Vampire flew on, still thrilling younger riders and delighting the older ones too. The freedom offered by these new flawless trains made for a decidedly different experience. However, they did come with their criticisms. Some called the ride slow, others labelled it rough, and there was just general ire and upset over the loss of the theme trains. But no one could argue that it was great Vampire was alive and kicking, and her future looked secure. But as the years went on, changes and losses were common. From 2010 onwards, Marcel's movements became jerky, sporadic, and out of sync with the soundtrack. As he got worse, the effort to turn him on was rarely made. In 2012, for still unconfirmed reasons, but rumoured to be down to insufficient available dispatch times and various other factors, Vampire operated with three trains for the final time. Sit back, hold tight, you're in for a fright. <laughs> Then, in 2014, a new version of the soundtrack debuted. This one discarded all the sound effects and the rock overture in favour of something a little less dramatic and more family friendly. One good thing that came out of this though, were some very good announcements for dispatch, station return and boarding. The gothic feel of Vampire was still clinging on and it added a sense of regality too. But the end of the season saw possibly the biggest loss to Vampire since it opened. Rather quietly, at the end of the 2014 season, the chandeliers came down. Again, we have no confirmed reason for this, but it is rumoured to be down to the winch motors used to lower them seizing up. The chandeliers are still stored on site behind the RAP queue, being hidden behind curtain. On top of this loss, the graveyard entrance canopy was demolished. This was rumoured to be due to a lack of maintenance, and it was replaced with nothing. Between 2015 and 2018, the standard of Vampire mostly continued to slip. The constant changing of the lighting around Marcel and the organ only served to drive home that he was dead, and Chessington either couldn't or didn't want to fix him. This was followed by the use of LED box lights in the station, but they cycled through multiple colours, resembling more of a disco than a gothic abbey. There were some reproofs, however. The original entrance was restored for 2016, but weirdly for a while, it wasn't used at all. In 2017, the soundtrack was again updated to include the removed sound effects that were sorely missed. But with good things, sadly, came some poor. The beautiful, regal and gothic feel of the 2014 announcements were replaced by the bored and couldn't care less attitude of the 2017 announcements. 2017 was arguably, and sadly, the lowest Vampire had fallen since 2000 when the original Vampire closed. Throughout this time the torches around the ride were breaking, some were fixed and stay as they were, some remained broken, and some disappeared, never to be seen again. After looking and feeling very sorry for itself, you could say 2018 was the beginning of Vampire's return to glory. 2018 saw the first time in my memory and camera archive that custom dispatches from amazing operators became commonplace with a feel. <laughs> I do remember dispatches from my childhood, but they weren't as common as they are today. Also in 2018, the original doors to Vampire opened for the first time since 2002, allowing fast trackers to pass through those doors once again. But the biggest changes were to come, and they'd arrive during a monumental event. 
a vampire. Oh yeah. Look. For the first time ever, Vampire was to open at Christmas and headline the ride lineup of Winter's Tale. Vampire had to be at her best for this event, and boy was she. All the torches within the station had been repaired and were in full working order. The lighting around the organ had been dimmed and changed to not focus on Marcel, but to light up the organ and maintain the feel of the station. It is! It's the original 1990! However, the biggest and best change was the newly restored original theme playing in the queue underneath some ambient sounds, but playing proud in the station. There were people who cared about Vampire, and this was the proof. With Vampire at the best ever seen since returning in 2002, she headlined Winter's Tale with presence and purpose. The 2019 season saw so much care and love from Chessington. It was clear that she was loved and people cared. Vampire finally felt almost whole again, and Marcel even made the odd visit to try and lead the music he'd once played for 20 years. The resurgence was almost complete, and it was clear that investment in Vampire was worth it. Her 30th year was approaching. There was no warning from Chessington. There was no idea for the public. But now we can surely say that a lot was going on behind the scenes. <laughs> The 2020 season rolled around, and we were not ready for what Chessington had done. No one could have been. The queue had been totally repaved, the scenery and feel had been totally upgraded, new theming elements and old had come together to create an amazing queue line feel. There was new ambience audio, which is arguably the best ever played throughout the queue. And it's just helped to tie the theme together. An entrance feature has been added to the beginning of the station building. The lighting and the scenery had been upgraded in the tunnel to the station. But so much more was to come. Marcel lives! Marcel lives! He's alive! Yes, Marcel lives. Fully restored and repaired, his clothes cleaned and a vampire logo embroidered on the back. The lighting package around the organ had been totally changed, now in sync with the new soundtrack and although a bookcase has been removed, it was replaced with a coffin and a built-in smoke effect. The LED box lights have been altered to maintain a fixed colour rather than cycle through every colour possible. As mentioned before, there was a brand new soundtrack and of course new announcements. Everything about Vampire felt so perfect throughout, thanks to the consistent look and feel. And while the initial reaction to these changes wasn't brilliant, as more and more people saw the upgraded Vampire in person, the reaction slowly moved towards being a positive one. Vampire was due to have a 30th birthday celebration in and around April 11th, 2020. Sadly, the worldwide pandemic happening put the brakes on that, but 2020 is definitely the renaissance of Vampire, and she is truly back to her best. So <laughs> that is the complete history of Vampire from opening in 1990 to the current day in 2020. But I wanted to add on a few things that I've thought about over the years, and a fact or two. So for me, Vampire is one of the best, if not the best, example of how to make incredible rides without inversions. Vampire combines so many elements like speed, the feeling of flight, intensity at points, a feel-good factor and creepiness to make one awesome ride. The trees in and around the ride also play a massive part too, it adds so much by doing so little. Each part of Vampire feels so perfect when you take it on and you never feel like it doesn't fit. Something I think that's important to remember is that Vampire has endured from 1990 onwards, even through her hiatus. She's seen three neighbours in Professor Burt's Bubble Works, the Imperial Leather Bubble Works, and the Gruffalo River Ride Adventure. But why? Why is Vampire singing off all these without straying far from her true theme and feel? Well, for me, the reason Vampire has seen off the competition for all these years stems back to the start. 
what happened to Professor Burt's Bubble Works in 1990 when it opened. It was so overshadowed by Vampire that Chessington chose to keep advertising Professor Burt's Bubble Works as new for 1991 too. That speaks volumes. But also, Vampire became an almost cult hero for Ride. It was fast and fun, it appealed to everyone, young and old. It was a shining example of what these new British theme parks could do. And as the popularity of The Neighbour dwindled, Vampire has always stayed strong. One quick fact is that although the face of Marcel is modelled off of Phil Collins' waxwork, he is not a repurposed waxwork in his entirety. This has been passed around as more of a Chinese whisper than anything else, and is even mentioned on the life-size top trump in the Wildwoods area, but it is simply not true. Did you also know that the man on horseback at the bottom of Lift Hill 2 is part of an old ride called Rodeo? Vampire always was, and always will be, revolutionary. She's endured so much over the last 30 years, and the major changes made to the ride by Vekoma when Arrow couldn't help prove that her ride is almost always savable. Hopefully this means she'll operate stronger than ever for decades to come. But even to this day, Vampire still pulls some of the biggest cues on Park, and she always earns rave reviews. You only need to look at the comments on social media when Chessington posts anything about Vampire. Everyone seems to love Vampire. And I truly hope that they always will.